Believe it or not, I think I've already missed out on the super optimal route by taking down that Alpha Metroid first. It's not a big deal though, it's not, it's not gonna be that much of a time sink. And it absolutely is not something that's going to prevent us from doing like the best ending or anything like that. As boy, the enemy spam right here is pretty freaking real, isn't it? Although, I guess while I'm thinking about that, I do want to mention a few things. Number one, I'm sorry if there are the occasional graphical glitches while playing this. I forgot if I mentioned this or not, but of course I'm not playing this on an OG 3DS. That would be way too much of a pain. In order to do that, not only were the capture cards so freaking expensive, but apparently it was just really hard to set up and really hard to get good quality from it, so it's a whole lot easier to just record it off an emulator. After I've already bought the game, mind you, so it's something I'm still getting used to, so I'm sorry if it's kind of sub optimal now, but there we go, that's the bomb. Wondered when we were going to get the Kind of figured that uh, it was not going to be too far behind. Of course, we know what the Morph Ball Ball does, it, it's, it's just absolutely what you would expect it to. And we know that I'm going to continue to pronounce it the Morph Ball Ball, blah blah blah, because that's what I've done since the Taste in Zero Mission, probably back in the original Metro 2 as well. I do love this room right here though, it's the perfect example of teaching through gameplay. So you just got the Scan Visor, uh, should I call it the Scan Visor? The Pulse Radar, rather. So you know that you're going to use it, you're going to find the one bombable place that is kind of in the floor right there for you to use, but you get down here and you want that missile, and you can learn that you can use the bombs not only to break through blocks, but to get a little hop as well with Samus, so a great way of teaching the player that, because you cannot get out of the room unless you do that, so yeah. But while we're on the topic of suboptimal gameplay, <laughs> and I'm not just talking from a technical sense too, I also kind of forgot if I mentioned this, because I kind of had to do the, uh... The first episode threw a lot of takes, took a lot of tries to get that the way I wanted it to. A little behind the scenes action for you there. So I forgot uh, if I mentioned whether or not I played this game a ton. Out of all the 2D Metroids, aside from maybe the original and uh, I guess somewhat ironically the, the first Metroid 2, this is definitely the 2D one I played the least. Probably because it is on the 3DS, but I have played Zero Mission and Super and Fusion, god, maybe even Dread at this point, uh, more than I ever played Samus Returns. So um, I usually take a whole lot of pride in being able to play these games very, very well. And maybe I haven't always lived up to that, but you know, I've always tried at the very least. You know, with the Prime games, I kind of slowly went up in difficulty. So, you know, that felt pretty good, actually, but uh, for this one, sorry if there's some some uh, some bumbles and some mistakes here and there, uh, because I don't have this game completely memorized. Like, I, I feel like I did super pretty freaking well. And this guy's just gonna follow me right down here until I learn to hashtag counter, aren't they? Ooh, but this is another good one. Power-ups back to back to back. Not good, not a super huge game. But we got the armament, we got the power! Time for a new beam! Which I actually have some issues with in this game, believe it or not. So the Ice Beam, the traditional Ice Beam, we can use that to freeze enemies. But now, it... I think it, on the base it like does the same damage as the Power Beam, but unfortunately the opening shot counts as the freeze a whole lot. Uh, which means in its totality it's going to take more hits to kill enemies with the Ice Beam, watch this. Yeah, which is kind of annoying, because the Ice Beam actually has a secondary function in this game, which is really, really freaking good. Which we're going to see momentarily! Or which we're going to see momentarily, not here apparently, but it's, it's soon enough, soon enough. I mean, it's pretty good that you can bounce over enemies with that for sure. I just wish that when you were hitting it in rapid fashion that um, it would know that you want to deal damage and, you know, it would just die that way. But ah, what do we have here? A missile tank, of course, and this room right here, I forget if I commented on this in the original Metroid 2, but I mean, you can see the Chozo statue right there, the traditional Chozo statue. But for some reason, does not have... Uh, does not have the power-up in its arms like it usually has. Um, and the power-up is like falling down or something like that. Don't really know what to make of that. We'll dissect that a little bit more once I go around, because we can only get the missile expansion that way. I also think maybe I missed a missile expansion like back in the first area. I might have to like backtrack off screen and actually get that. I'm not going for 100% like through this initial run-through, like through uh, with the final boss, because you know I want to get there fast. Uh, but um, I did get 100% in the original, so maybe I should deal with that there. But like I said, it's made a little bit more complicated. Alright, we're gonna, gonna finish this guy off here. It's made a little bit more complicated by the fact that you cannot get 100% until you've actually rescued the baby. And another thing, I wish enemies would stay frozen just a little bit longer here. Okay, we're just gonna kill you. Let's get another one here. Come on. Way more of this in this game than other Metro games too, it feels like. Well, that's not gonna be good enough at all now, is it? Also, another reason I want to apologize for the gameplay is not quite used to um, playing with the controller that I'm using right here. I guess the Xbox 360 style controller, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm sorry if I kind of fumble my way with the controls that way too. You know, I've done a decent amount of practicing, so I feel like I've got it done fairly well. So 
But again, if there are any kind of uh, real problems right there. Well, I mean, this is the Virgo charm, right? I'm always gonna fumble around with the controller, because I'm old! <laughs> I'm getting up there. I've been playing games on this channel for ten years. Well, not ten years consecutively, mind you, but... I mean... I mean, it's still ten years. Still ten years later. Alright, well, that didn't work. Might be relying on the missiles a bit more heavily. Because, I mean, what you can do is you can switch between the ice beam and the power beam. Like, uh, that's not really an issue. Uh, the issue is that you do it via the touch screen. And although my laptop is actually touch screen, so I could just tap it if I wanted to and use it that way. Um, I'm actually uh, projecting this onto the, the TV that I usually use to, replay, to, to record and uh, play gameplay footage on. Because the laptop screen, of course, is very tiny, which makes the touch screen down there even tinier if I'm trying to read that. So I can't exactly just touch it on the fly and it'd be super convenient that way. Um, so we'll just see if we can rock with the ice beam right here, kind of use the missiles to hide any flaws. How, uh, what, what, what an idea, right? Wow, like, Virgo could possibly use missiles in a Metroid playthrough. We can destroy that, but I don't think that's gonna do much for us, so... And that's a bomb one, so there you go. Don't know why that's destroyable either, but if there are any gotcha power-ups in this game, it's probably something like that, where you're just going down a corridor, and then all of a sudden, oh, there's a breakable block that you just missed, because you wouldn't possibly know it was there without the scan visor, and uh, there was a missile tank in there, so... That's the that's the traditional Metroid kind of seeping back into this game for all the improvements that Mercury Steam did indeed make. And I don't think we want to go up quite yet. We could. How am I doing on energy and missiles? We're actually full, so yeah, we're just going to go this way. It's party time. Another alpha. Alright, so now we actually have the ice beam for this one. I love this. This is a great addition uh, to this game. So in the original Metroid 2, you could only harm all these variants with missiles, so if you ran, ran out of missiles, uh, you were way out of luck. And also, it didn't make a ton of sense story-wise, because, of course, the base larval Metroids were only weak to the ice beam, weak to the cold. That was actually a pretty major focal point in the lore. The only way to stop the Metroids would be with the cold. So it was really bizarre when you would get here, and oh yeah, we do have something up here. When you would get to Metroid 2, and all the variants that evolved from the Metroids were just not vulnerable to the ice beam at all. Like, what kind of sense does that make? So in Samus Returns, they, de they decided to rectify that, not only for plot reasons, because it makes more plot sense. Ooh, energy tank. Because it makes more sense plot-wise that all the variants after the Metroid larva form would, you know, be vulnerable to the cold. It's the only weakness that Chozo put in there for a reason. Um, but also from a gameplay perspective, so if you happen to run out of missiles during a Metroid fight, well, you don't have to just reset. You could actually have another option here by using the Ice Beam. And as we saw, I mean, I, I believe that the Ice Beam does flat less damage than the missiles, like, actually to the Metroids. Um, but the Ice Beam... So I think we have something up here, right? I actually remember this from the original. I'll get back to the Ice Beam in a minute. But I'm gonna scan. I don't want to fall down here. Oh, is there a flat lot of nothing in here? Oh, it's further on down here. Yeah, we have an energy recharge and a missile recharge. But more importantly, we're going to have a, uh, a missile expansion over here as well. I remember this in the original in our area too. You go to the top and you have these two. Of course, I needed it way more back then because well, the original Metroid 2 is freaking, pretty freaking hard too. Uh, not for the same reason Samus Returns is, but we'll, you know, we'll get some more, more, more of that later. More of that later. I'm trying not to get too confused right here. <laughs> but about the Ice Beam, uh, you saw that it froze the underside of that Alpha Metroid, uh, which kind of prevented it. I think it slowed it down a little bit, and I think it also prevented it from using all those electric attacks um, that some of the Metroids have in this game. So, okay, let's wake you up. Kill you here. Because this is an example of a puzzle room, I believe. So, the missile expansion is up there. But if you just go right below it, that fan's gonna suck it up and you're gonna be way out of luck. So if we destroy right here, though... And then we see there is one... You destroy with a missile! So there we go. That reminds me, I think there's actually something like that, where we fought the first Alpha Metroid in this game that we're gonna have to go get. Yeah, because I didn't have the bombs back then. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And I think I'm gonna have to bomb jump for this one, too. Or that'll destroy it? There we go. Don't wanna get stuck with the bomb jumping, that's for sure. But I guess I can go ahead and address the difficulty, too. I mean, yo, know, pat myself on the back. I was pretty freaking proud of myself for... I think I just want to drop down here, actually. For playing the original Metroid 2, you know, as well as I did. It's kind of a crusty old game that, you know, not a whole lot of people like. It kind of has that old-school difficulty just because you can't save and stuff like that, and the checkpoints are kind of wonky. And... Uh-oh. Well, I saw that fish right there, and I thought he was going to zap this entire platform, which is probably still what he's about to do, but I'm going to get this expansion regardless. <laughs> and not even mess with him. Uh, Samus Returns is kind of difficult for a different way. I feel like the enemies do a whole lot more damage, and it's just a lot more technical. You kind of got to be a lot quicker with your fingers. Let's see, and I th think we could go in here, but... I don't believe we could actually get the expansion in here. As soon as I get in here, I think we're going to see why. Yeah, we'll see that right there. We see that door, but yeah, it's covered by, of course, a wave beam monster. We're going to give a wave... Well, not the wave beam, necessarily. I guess the... 
What are they calling it these days? <laughs> the Spazer Beam? What do they call it in Dread? I don't know. I think I'll just always call it the Spazer Beam. That's what I'm used to. I was super Metroid and all that. But the ability to have more than just one power beam coming out of Samus, which kind of so sounds a little weird now that I put it that way. Ah, crap. So many enemies here. <laughs> go, go, go. And I don't think there's going to be anything above us either. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is all just empty room. So now, um, how many DNA do we have? We have two. Which doesn't feel like the amount- Oh wait, no, I think that is the amount that I actually need. Which should be good. Now we're gonna have to go back to, uh, near where I fought the first Alpha Metro here. And then we'll continue on from there. And I think I can just fall down and, uh, and avoid you guys this time. Get my Aeon refill. Oh, he's gonna come after me. Yeah, enemies tend to do a lot more damage and the boss fights tend to be a bit more technical here. When I say boss fights, in this game, of course, I'm, I'm referring to uh, primarily just the Metroids that we're going to have to take down pretty continually. Uh, pretty much the only thing that this game has that you could consider boss fights in a lot of ways. Um, which was, you know, a, a common point of criticism, which I get. They do add in some extra ones here. Um, but they did soup up the Metroid fights. They are way more involved than they were back in the original Metroid 2. So I think, you know, that... I thought I hit you with a missile. <laughs> so that overall, I think, is a bit more of an improvement. And these guys, whenever they assault you when you're trying to get up on uh, a ledge, is just the freaking worst. <laughs> okay, but this is another one right here. Yeah, we have that right there. And I don't think I can actually... Yeah, because that thing will suck up the bombs. So let's use the pulse radar to look around a little bit more. Ooh, and I can hear a Metroid growling. Oh yeah, that block right there. So that block up there, actually on the top right, that would have led us to the bomb a little bit earlier, and I believe that was the optimal route to take right here. I was chatting too much, so I actually missed it. <laughs> but it'll be fine. I have to remember that I have the spider pole now. Yeah, I can just climb up walls now. And that was so weird in the original Metroid too, if you're coming off of like, um... If you're coming off of maybe the original Metroid, or even Super, really, that you get the spider ball relatively early, and it just allows you to climb up freaking walls. Like, um, the space jump, you know, for all intents and purposes, kind of allowed you to do the same thing, but the, getting the spider ball so early was just always kind of bizarre, really. And I'm saying really a lot, so I'm gonna have to really apologize for that. So these walls right here, those are the ones that were covered by the bombs, I believe, right? There we go, now we're in here like swimwear, baby. But actually, let's go this way first. I believe that there's a power-up that I missed over here, question mark? No, I think it's further below us. Gonna have to go over here. Filling in the map is so easy in Samus Returns, and I really appreciate that. Again, some people, you know, that might rub the wrong way, which I understand to an extent, I suppose. Um, if you're really just kind of like scouring every single tile of the entire map and things like that. But for someone who kind of likes to complete these games on YouTube, or at least get as many... Uh, expansions as possible. Being able to fill in the map is actually pretty freaking nice as you go along with the pulse radar. Yeah, this is the Metroid down here I wanted. Alright, come at me again. And there we go. Not too threatening. And I'm glad I got to flex on the fact that I can beat the Alpha Metroids in this area without the Ice Beam. Still a healthy 50 missiles, too. I mean, I think I've gotten every single freaking expansion so far, so it's not that big of a shock. But just one more in the area. Yeah, another great thing about this game, uh, as opposed to the original, we know exactly how many Metroids we have to get. <laughs> we don't have to go, oh man, is this going to be the one that uh, that uh, makes it to where I, uh, the, the lava will recede in the tunnel or something like that? Nothing like that. And I think I saw the Metroid actually flying in the background there. Did I, did I miss see that? I may have. Ah, boy, this is something else right here. Ow! This is something else right here that, uh, makes using this controller just a little bit more awkward. Yeah, the fact that the enemies just tend to kind of bounce off you all around. And this jump right here, this one's gonna be very, very difficult for me. Yeah, because with this controller, I'm noticing I'm going a little bit further, uh, than I want to go. Every single time I press a direction, which is, you know, very annoying. But, destroy that, jump up, there we go! Ooh, okay, usually that's a whole lot more difficult. But here we go, last Metroid fight. Yeah, it comes out of the background. Um, and we saw it in the background, you know, so. I do wonder why a lot of these Metroids have, like, an electric, uh, element to them. Elemency, almost. Because we know the Metroids are highly adapted to their environment, right? Okay. There we- Ah, oh, god, it has to be, like, fully charged up, I guess. So I wonder what it is about the atmosphere of SR388 that, like, causes them to, to gain some kind of, uh, like, electric affinity, as it were. And this one is a bit harder than the others. It's gonna take a few more hits, it looks like. Can't get you with the dive bomb there. It is red though, so maybe a few more charged ice beam shots. Come at me! Ah, these are just kind of rapid fire like that, I guess. And did I take a hit after the cutscene? Come on, game. I'll take that.
And look at that, the game is even nice enough to tell us, hey, you found enough DNA, you can actually make the lava recede in the tunnel now. Ah. So now we just have to backtrack though, I think right here though, should be an easier way to get there. Yeah, <laughs> screw that noise going all the way up there again. I keep wanting to use the jump ball, I forgot. If you guys will remember, in the original Metroid 2, there was like one optional boss. I, I don't even know if you could really call it an optional boss, like it was super optional. And that was to get the spring ball, that was to get the jump ball, you know, whatever we're gonna call it these days. And that thing's the- ah uh, uh, yeah, he's gonna ruin my day up here. Alright, there we go, no more. But uh, it was the one optional boss, and it was actually the boss I didn't even need him to get up here. Sigh. Oh, and thank you, enemy. I appreciate it. That was a lot more helpful. But it was actually, um, the first, uh, boss in Fusion, too. If you'll remember that, it was an ex-possessed one in Fusion. I forget the name. You know, I've never really been good with the, the Metroid enemy names besides the Zoomers, of all things. Um, the Zoombas. I thought I'd try to be funny here and get that. Oh, there's an energy recharge station up there. Don't know why you need it, though. Kind of hard to get up there, too. Like, you, it's almost like you'd lose more energy than it's really worth getting up to the healing station trying to do that. Um, but he was the one optional boss in the original Metroid 2, and he was guarding the spring ball and all things. Which is kind of a weird choice in hindsight, don't really know why that was the case. Um, but, uh, it's the same case in this game, I believe. I'll be a little souped up. Which is kind of interesting, you know, original had one optional boss that was not a freaking Metroid. But this game adds a few more, so that's something we're gonna look forward to. One of them that's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> kind of infamous among the, the players of this game, I think. Ah, oh boy. Trying to climb up the ledges and being stopped at every turn is definitely the biggest flaw of those enemies right there, Jesus. I think that's kind of like one more slight negative for Samus Returns. I remember reading this in a lot of reviews too. Enemy placement is just a little bit off on this game too, it feels like. But again, you know, uh, your freshman outing with the Metroid series, there could be a, like a few bumps here and there. And of course, can't get that power up down there, get something else that I can't really deal with. And I guess I could go into the heat, just if I wanted to kind of demonstrate uh, the music that it plays in there, which would be really cool. Now I'm going to save that for when we can, like, actually go in there, though. Although, just having one superheated room in this entire area, you know, just just one, so you know I'm going to have to backtrack when I get the, the various suit. A really, game? Come on. And really, Virgo, for getting hit by the flying pizzas again. Okay, here we go, though. Four Metroid DNA coming right up. And one aspect about this game that I don't think really gets enough credit, probably number one, the soundtrack. Although anyone that heard the tunnel probably knows that it got what an epic soundtrack. Well, what an epic song that was at the very least. But also kind of the sound direction, I feel like. We have to remember, you know, the first time the studio took on Metroid. And they were really, like, smart enough and considerate enough to, um, whenever you activate that Chozo Tech right there. Oh god, what is this? Bomb blocks? Oh, they're down there. Excuse me? That, um, whenever you activate that Chozo Tick, they do the ho 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 You know, like the, the same sounds uh, that would make uh, back in Zero Mission, if you remember that. Yeah, whenever you were in, like, the, the optional uh, areas and you would, like, get the tech that way. And what in the world am I doing right here? Scan Visor, please help me out. <laughs> but uh, I, I just love, like, the sound direction in this game as well. And what is up with that? Why can't I get the repair? No, the only thing that you've missed is being a complete and utter moron, Virgo, because you forgot that you actually have the spider ball. <laughs> Come on, man, you even practiced this. Although I guess I'm still, I, my lone defense is that I'm still kind of in dread mode, you know? Still kind of in dread mode, and I don't think there's like that, just a an abject spider ball in that one. Uh, one thing dread really does well, and I guess I'm kind of like spoiling it right here, is uh, kind of introducing, um, int introducing, uh, like, well, maybe they're not brand new exactly, that's kind of one of the issues I have with Dread. Kind of introducing new power-ups that kind of functionally do the same thing, uh, but kind of operate in a different manner? Yeah, 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 we'll go with that. <laughs> That'll be how I use that. But... We're gonna continue on right here. Yeah, I do see that one power-up over there, and I kind of want it. I'm gonna go ahead and nab that real quick. Even if I can, if I even can, man. Are you gonna be the key? Let's see. Oh yeah, and the spider ball cannot go up these things right here. And I couldn't get in there even if I wanted to. See that pulsating uh, purple thing right there? Yep, something we can too. That's something that annoyed me about playing this game, is seeing all these creatures just sucking on these doors and wondering when am I going to get to kill those things? That's super annoying. They're just feasting on my door that I need to get through. <laughs> but that's enough. Okay, there we go. On to area three, everyone. 